I totally disagree with you. I think, if anything, Hillary is the abusive one, but I don't see any signs of abuse at all. Have you ever had a serious relationship before? Just check it real quick. Nope. <laughs> if she literally is stressed to the limit here, and there's a lot of reasons for her to be, and she feels like she needs space from him, I think it's totally fair for her to want to take space. I don't think that's necessarily abusive. We need more information to say that. Where is well, the abuse? I've already told you. I'm not saying that he is abusive. I'm saying that in this clip, he is clearly exhibiting signs of abuse. Now, there's background information that could make me feel a little bit differently about it, but there is no conversation you can ever have with a partner where you're saying things like, you need to rise up and do your wifely duties. You're not worthy of being considered a wife. Why are you smoking cigarettes? Oh my God, it's so bad for you. What is wrong with you? I'm Holy shit. I will quit smoking forever if you agree to be my partner in this debate. I'm not gonna take the, uh, the... My name is Grace Thorpe. I go by Grace Thorpe, aka Joan on YouTube. And uh, I'm a streamer, commentator. Um, I recently did a debate on modern day debate about gender. I was arguing that there are more than two genders. And I would consider myself a centrist. I've... I'm 20. Jeez, yeah, okay. That was like 12 red <laughs> flags all in a row, but okay. <laughs> um, okay. I boom, got boom. I got lots more. I'm, yeah, I'm sure. Well, are you a psychology major too, or what? Oh no, I didn't even graduate high school, so. Jesus Christ, all right. <laughs> okay, so initially, um, modern day debate guy, James, good friend of Subway, mm -hmm. um, reached out and said that he wanted you and me to do a duo debate against two other people, arguing that Steven Crowder was not abusive at all. Yeah, um, yeah. And I don't agree with that. Um, sure. I think he, <laughs> I think there are definitely signs of abuse at the very least in that okay. um, video and you seem to disagree. So you, and you wanted to hop on and chat about it. Yeah, I totally disagree with you. I think if anything, Hillary is the abusive one, but I don't see any signs of abuse at all. Okay. 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 Um, so yeah, where do you want to start? We can, okay. So I or have actually, a whiteboard. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was gonna say before, do you wanna just watch the video from start to finish and then I can write down things that I think are abusive and then you can be refreshed on it and then we can jump into the conversation? Sure, sure, we can do that, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna push play in three, two, one, go. I drew a boundary. I drew a boundary. No, no, you just did, you just did it. I drew a boundary and abusive and cruel. You were not taking the car. Because if you refuse to do white food things, then I will go pick up the groceries. American groceries. I would have steaks, wood pellets, my grill. I know it's not a reasonable request, but I'll go do it. How about you first? Hillary, how do you respect the man? Yes, how do you man? I will man. 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 You see the love of that. Respect. No, no, how do you man? No, you're not taking the car. Steven, you're not taking the car. Steven. You are not then I will ask someone to pick you up. Would you like me to ask? Oh, right. It's not correct, Stephen. Give it an Uber. Okay, Stephen, I can't. D feeling some constraints? Stephen. Like, I can't Steven. go. I, listen to me. Listen to me. You want to walk out right now? Listen to me. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. I can't call my friends. I can't go. I can't be home. You're going to take the car and leave me here. Hillary, just think of how boxed in you've made me. What do you need me to pick up? I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. No, that doesn't work either. You'll be back when you're back. That doesn't work either. See, I, I, Do you understand the difference between my life being set to the second and you going to the back on back? The only way out of it is discipline or respect. It's the only way out of it or we're at an impact. We are going to get past. Good. Because you can't have any discipline or respect. Yeah. Yeah. There Steven? you go. You throw your hand. You give up so easily. I don't give up. Steven. You, know, Steven? you give up so easily. I, I just said the only way out of this is discipline and respect. You said then we're at an impasse. Steven, no, we are at an impasse. Okay. I love you, but Stephen, Stephen, your abuse is sick. Your abuse watch it. Is sick. Watch it. Fucking watch it. I'm gonna let go. I'll get what you need me to get. And I, I need some space. We need you to just fucking baby for a little bit. Okay. I love you. I love you very much. I don't love you. That's the big problem. I've never received love from you. And the fact is, when I go, look, I need you to do A, B, C, and D, you just be disciplined about it, you go, no. But I love you more than life itself. Okay. Put on some gloves. No. But I love you more than life itself. That's not fair. That's not fair, and it's disingenuous. Hillary, you're right, right in past. Become someone, listen to me, day in and day out, worthy of a wife 
Were it? No, not as a wife. I didn't say as a wife. Hillary, 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 come on now. I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to engage anymore. I'm going to go. I'll get texting what you need. I'll get you what you need. I, I love you. I'm committed to you. Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm, I'm, not, engaged, I'm not trying to... Are you committed enough to do those things? Like You're not committed to anything. You're not committed to anything. You just said I love you and committed to you. Walk the dog's front and gloves. Walk the dog's front and gloves. Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm good. Walk the dog's front and gloves. Are you committed enough to get the medication the dog's Don't you take that in. No. Okay. okay. All right. Wow. Lots of... You're really fighting an uphill battle here, huh? <laughs> you want to see my schizo document? I, I got a ton of things to say. Okay. Oh, you got schizo documents. Yeah, show me. Okay. Watch, it. Uh. <laughs> watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch <laughs> it. Watch it. Fucking watch it. Okay. I don't love you. Here. Good. You're unworthy. I am. Take an Uber. <clears throat> yeah, go take an Uber, okay? Get out of here. Watch it. Okay, we'll do. Watch it. Okay, oh my god, we got a whole document. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ready? Um, sure. Okay. So first of all, this starts off from a like they were talking before this, right? True. This is obviously in the middle of something. Okay. Yep. This conversation is not about her getting groceries, and it's not about her taking the car. This is the last conver this is possibly the last conversation they had before she left him. Where everybody misses the context of that. This is potentially the last conversation they had before she left him. At the end of the video it said she fled the home, right? Then a couple months later she divorced him. Plus there's tons of things within the video that imply that this is her walking out on him. He says he says, you want to walk out right now? That isn't something you say to somebody when they're just going to get groceries. She says, I need some space. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? You don't say that. I need time and space. You don't say that when you're going to get groceries. She is walking out on him, and he's frustrated because he's saying, you're not committed. You give up so easily, Hillary. And she's saying, I need to go. I'll be back when I'm back. How is that him abusing her? This is her leaving him a couple days before he has chest surgery. Okay, true. Okay, so where do you see abuse in this? Where do, is she, it says she fled the home. She left him after this. <clears throat> okay. Oh man, okay. Have you ever had a serious relationship before? Just check it real quick. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> man, you're really... Man, really testing. Okay, you're really testing okay, me. Okay, okay no, okay, that's okay. No, 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 that's okay. Hold on, that wasn't to discredit you. I'm sorry. I'm just. It helps me navigate the conversation a little bit better. Okay, that's fine though. Okay, all right. My parents have been through something very similar to this, so I do have that. But I understand the Base. biased or whatever. Okay. Um, I wrote down 19 little quotes and things, and I'll just kind of like talk through things. Um, but before we before we get to that, um, can, let's get a common definition of like. What does abusive mean? I would say abusive is abuse. So misusing the other person, using them in a way that isn't respectful of them as a person, like using them to feel better about yourself, treating them poorly. I don't know. I'm misusing another person. Okay, I can, I can work with this. This is, this is I think it's an okay definition. Um, yeah. I might be a little bit more strict in some cases, but sure, we can say that here. So okay. let me talk about this um, broadly speaking we would say that um misusing uh, not being respectful of another person or treating them incredibly poorly misusing them stuff like that right sure yes okay so here are a here I, so i wrote down 19 quotes and things that he's doing a lot that i feel like are probably disrespectful and not healthy towards seeking some sort of like good resolution okay ready okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing we run into is there's a lot of interrupting, okay? The general tone of the conversation is very aggressive from Steven Crowder's side, okay? Would you okay. agree with that? I would say he's frustrated and she's disengaged, and being disengaged is a form of abuse. Um, I can agree with you, 
but it seems like she's answering most of his questions. She's relatively engaged. I don't necessarily see the disengagement. Um, also, while I agree with you that disengagement can be a form of abuse, it can also be um, a form of conflict resolution to where like right now we're both heated. I need to take a step back because this isn't going to be productive, right? Could be. It could be, yes. But I, okay. I, I think in this situation, that's just for me, mm -hmm. I don't think he's being abusive. So I don't think she, I think she's just disengaging because she's overwhelmed. And I am sympathetic with her, but I do think she's just disengaging instead of engaging with his frustrations, honestly. Sure, potentially, okay. So I'm keeping potential pathways open because, yeah, okay. there's a lot of, a lot yeah. of potentialities, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I think that when you're in the middle of a fight and you're having... Um, a disagreement over responsibilities, uh, using really loaded terms to demean your partner or make them seem like they're not worthy of love or status, it's kind of an abusive thing. So when I say things like, um, oh, you're not gonna do your wifely things, um, wifely things seems like you're treating them with a lot of uh, disrespect. Like, you can't I, even do your wifely things? Why don't you, that's one thing that I quote they wrote here. And then later on, I think he says, um, you need to become someone worthy of being a wife. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty rough. I think that absolutely is not only not disrespectful, it's incredibly respectful. He's saying, I hold you as a person to a higher standard. She, she, they're both Christian, right? They both agreed to a tra having a traditional marriage. He's saying, you agreed to do these things things you're not doing them i respect you enough to say you can do better than this that's extremely respectful sure if you say it in a frustrated way because you're frustrated with their failures okay but like that's okay for a man to express frustration too just because a man's frustrated or even angry doesn't mean he's abusive so i'm not saying that just because he's angry or frustrated means he's abusive okay i love getting angry and frustrated but there's a difference between saying like listen you're my wife I know you can do better than this. That's a lot different than saying like, why don't you become somebody worthy of being a wife? Become somebody worthy of being respectful. The first one is said with an obvious shared hope of this person living up to your expectations. The second one kind of sounds like a condescending stinging bite that you're just like throwing out there to kind of like knock the person down a peg or two. Well, I'm not saying he's perfect. Okay, but I also, I, I think in response to that, I would say he's getting frustrated because she's disengaging and her being manipulative and saying, I love you, I love you, but Steven, I'm not doing this right now. That is manipulative. That is also expressing anger. It's just in a feminine way. And also, this is not about minor responsibilities. This is about whether she's going to walk out on him at his weakest point right before he's getting chest surgery and before their twins are about to be born. It's not about the car or the groceries. Okay, well, I'm not necessarily even making this about the car aggression. I'm just trying to peel through one of these at a time. So when you say, I love you, that's manipulative. It could be manipulative. It, that could be escalatory or de-escalatory. I don't think we have enough information to clearly say. She, she walked out on the guy and divorced him a couple months later, and she says, I love you and I'm committed to you. That's a lie. That's we don't, a lie but we don't know. But we don't know why they got divorced. We don't know what happened or what caused it. It might have been the fact that she was leaning towards it, but finding out that he got a divorce lawyer was what drove her. Was she like, well, fuck, if you're getting a lawyer, like I'm obviously going to get divorced, right? Okay, hey, but even if that was true, right? Supposedly he hired this lawyer after this video, right? It was it wasn't before June of 2021, right? Mhm. Mm okay, so even if that was true, first of all, just because he spoke, there's no such thing as a divorce attorney. There's people who are specialized in family law and obviously people who specialize in divorce, but there's no such in her family statement. I mean, you can't even Wait, take Wait, wouldn't her that be a divorce seriously. attorney? What do you mean? <laughs> Well, they're not called divorce attorneys. They just specialize in family law and they specialize in a range of fields. Sure, it's a divorce but, attorney. I have a defamation lawyer. It's not like they specialize or they're called that, but they're, it's a lawyer that has specialties that work certain cases, right? You have a divorce attorney, probably somebody that works in family law, probably somebody that specializes in dealing with divorces, probably even from the male side, right? There's, there's, you call him a divorce attorney. I think that's fine. Sure. Okay. Yeah, but but first of all, from her family statement, first of all, who, who is this family? Somebody should be held to account for making these allegations, such as that he cut her off financially when there's no backup for that. True, true. Those who are, is this family? To I be think clear, it's just though, her. article, that's different. Those are different things. I'm just dealing with the claims in the video, just what we're going in the video line by line. So you said, I love you. Well, but you, you said the divorce lawyer thing. Well, no, no, I'm just focusing on this one statement. I love you, that's manipulative. I don't think saying I love you is necessarily manipulative. It can be manipulative or it could be de-escalatory, right? So for instance, you can be in the middle of a fight with somebody and, and, and um, there are ways that you can like weaponize I love you, right? To where like you do something really fucked up and you're like, why are you being like this? Like, I love you, like, come on, like, I love you, like, don't blah, blah, blah. Or 
um, you know, you you can use it reasonably to de-escalate a fight. Like, listen, we're fighting right now. This is really heated. I still love you, but I need space, right? It could be either. I don't know if there's an, enough context in this video to clearly say it's one or the other, you know? I think I love you can be escalatory or de-escalatory. I don't think we know but enough in the video. Says, yeah, go ahead. Okay, but she says, I love you and I'm committed to you twice. And then she flees, but from her own words, she flees the house and divorces him a couple months later when she is, like, after she gives birth to his twins and after he has massive surgery, which her family nastily characterized as him choosing not to be there for the birth of his kids. That was not true at all. He had lung complications after the surgery. It was elective sur surgery. The only difference between elective surgery and emergency surgery is that elective is scheduled. It doesn't mean you don't need it. Gastric I, I bypass understand. is an elective. Yep. Surgery. I understand all of this, but that's not relevant to the video we're watching, right? Um, it could, there could be any number of reasons why they got divorced after. Maybe, uh, and also, hold on, step by step. She says that she's taking okay. space after this, when she leaves. Is there something wrong with taking space? She didn't take space. She left and divorced him. Wait, wait, wait. It's not like she left and then like divorced him right then. Like she left and then went to LegalZoom.com and filed the paperwork, right? We don't know what's happening between now and- A couple months later. Okay, that's a long time to hold your breath, okay? A couple months is, that's well, a lot. Okay, but she also, she also saved this footage though from the ring camera, right? She sure. saved it, right? Sure. So she must have saved it within a month of it happening, yep. right? Because- Okay, so how is that commit? How is that being committed to somebody when you're saving footage to use against them, only a month after an argument happens to use against them in a divorce? In could divorce be for court? a lot of different reasons. They could automatically back up the footage because they're celebrities, maybe. Or she could be worried that she's on the verge of giving birth to children, and she's worried that some sort of divorce or whatever is going to leave her financially fucked because now, for whatever reason, her husband could claim something she doesn't get child support. So now she needs some footage for like a divorce, even though I think it's a no fault state. Uh, there could be a million reasons why they save the footage. I'm not here to evaluate. I don't know if I can know. I don't know if you can know, right? There is um, there's a million reasons why that footage could have been saved, but we, we have no idea, right? Well, I mean, clearly she saved it. It's not, Steven didn't leak that, right? So, so clearly she saved it. We don't know that. Why do you so say clear? How do you know they both didn't save it? How do you know they both don't have copies of this? Well, or even I mean, they could even, like, they could literally have saved this to like go over with the therapist, right? They might save all their footage from here and they back it up because like when we go to therapist, we can show this fight and we can see like, you know, maybe there's a different way we could approach this or who's more, you know, needs to figure out how to navigate this disagreement. I mean, they could, but that seems highly unlikely, especially because it was leaked to Yashar Ali. Do you know who Yashar Ali is? I know that he was. Do you know his wasn't. credentials as I, a journalist? Yeah, he's a gossip journalist, but he's not in this video. I'm not talking about the article. <laughs> I'm talking well, about but the I'm video. saying, if you take it in context, she's leaking this. this I agree. Piece, this information yep. to a scumbag who he owes women like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yep. He doesn't pay them back. He, he lived with Kathy Griffin. Yep. And you know, it's he used Gossip her tabloid and she didn't person. feel comfortable. Absolutely. Right. Yep. So she's leaking it. Doesn't that explain the context of her actions somewhat to say like, yeah, she says, I love you and I'm committed to you. Then a couple, uh, uh, she hangs on to this footage two years later. She's exposing him with this footage she shaved to a scumbag journalist. Doesn't that mean anything? Doesn't that back up that he's saying you haven't proven your love through your actions? She could leak this uh, to Hitler's autobiographer, and this could be like the opening chapter of Mein Kampf version two, and it wouldn't change necessarily what we're seeing in the video, right? Like, I think Steven Crowder's, I think there are things that could change the way that I view Crowder here, where it's like, oh, I understand why he's doing this. But I think that the behavior here is still like pretty clearly abusive. And I still think we have to deal with the actual statements that are said in the video, right? So like, we don't know why they're, we don't know why they got divorced. We actually have no idea, right? We know that they got divorced a few months after this fight, but they could have fought after this. They could have gotten back to the house and had, and made up after this, right? We have no idea, right? Well, she is clearly saying they're divorcing because he's emotionally abusive, right? That's her claim. Is it? Well, that's her family's claim. Whoever her family is, I think it's just her. I think they specified that there was no physical abuse. I think that's what they said. I don't know if an explicit reason was given for the um, breakup, but even if there was, or, I'm sorry, even if there was, uh, we don't know if it was because of this video, right? Like, what if it was that there was another video that gets released and Steven Crowder is like, I hate you, you stupid cunt. I hope you die when you give birth to your twins. Fuck you, bitch. Right? Then we'd probably, like, okay, yeah, it's probably, it's, I understand why she wants to get divorced, right? But we don't know. We don't have the context, right? Well, but okay, first of all, she saved this video. It's her video because at the end, right, she says Steven Crowder, by his own admission, said, uh, I'll f you up, right? That She said that at the end, right? There's mm -hmm. a little text box. Who would know that he said that other than her? It was just them in the house, 
right? And he hasn't admitted that publicly. So who would know that other than her and him? And he certainly didn't edit that video. So who put that in there? Her. It's her video. Yeah, but right? I don't even, this might be evidence that they're using in court right now, right? And maybe that's what's submitted to whatever court they're fighting in, right? Right, but you were saying you don't know if it's her video or his video or whoever. Who no, 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 hold on. What I said initially, her. what I said initially was I don't know who records stuff. They could, you would, you have to admit, they could both be recording, right? Well, yeah, they could, but she leaked it and it's her video with her editing with information only she would know. I agree with that. I don't disagree with that. But that doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that it's not a, an example of him being abusive, right? Well, but also you said you don't know what happened after this video. We do know. She says, by her own admission, she fled the home, and then he went in a couple days later for massive chest surgery. Yeah, yeah, but I'm we saying do we know don't know happened. if this was like the last fight they had before they got divorced. We don't know if this is the reason for their divorce. Well, even within her own statement, they say he wasn't, he chose not to be there for the birth of his kids shortly after he bought a townhouse and gave her back the house. Sure. So we basically know what happened. They essentially separated. This was very likely their last conversation. We, if there was I, I don't, something we don't have, this. hold on. We have no idea. We have no way of knowing that. Right? Well, it w if it wasn't the last, it was leading up to the very last. And she did say herself, she fled the house after this. That means you're not coming back. We don't it know that. Very, it might have been. It could put. Could, Hold on. So right now, are you prepared to say 100% she never went back to the house while he was there? No, I'm not. But he went in for surgery. She fled the home. Then after this, you know, then she gave birth and he had he had lung complications. Then he bought a townhouse and she moved into their old house. I'm just saying it's very likely that this was their last conversation. Okay. Maybe it was. You don't know that. Neither of us know that. However, even if that was the case, it doesn't change the fact that the behavior in this video might be abusive from Stephen Crowder. Okay. So you okay? Which part of it did you say you said was abusive that he is saying that a ton he of things. wants so to I hold her to a higher standard? The aggressive and interrupting tone, the condescending way of saying you're not doing wifely things, um, the very standoffish attitude he has. You're not taking the car, rather than like, can we try to work on a different solution here? When she pause, when she offers another potential, like, well, can I call? Do I want to call a friend? Who should I call? And he's like, is that a threat? Get an Uber, right? Instead of working towards a common solution there, um, instead of acknowledging her pain or whatever, being like, feeling some constraints. This is what my life is like right like being very aggressive in here um you can interrupt me whatever time i was like listening up stuff i ever sure, written down sure. thinking of uh think of how boxed in you've made me right the constant like refocusing on himself not taking into account his wife's problems or how boxed in she might feel being literally fucking double pregnant um the um not not ever wanting yes, to fight yeah go on but he also says, so you're just going to leave me here a couple days before his surgery, right? So that he is arguing with her. He's trying to get her to stay. He's saying, come on, Hillary, you give up so easily. We can work this out. I don't know if he exactly said that, but he said, you, 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 uh, what did he say? You, you, you give up the ghost so easily or something like that. Yeah. Right. He's saying you're leaving me a couple days before my surgery. And she was escalating. You say that he's aggressive. OK. But she also is just saying, Stephen, Stephen, I'm not doing this. I'm taking the car. That's not aggressive. She's just, she keeps moving towards the door and just saying, I'm leaving. I, 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 I need some space. I'm not doing this with you right now. She's not asserting dominance over the conversation and saying, actually, I'm not engaging with you. We're not going to talk it out. He clearly wants to talk it out. Mm -hmm. She keeps moving to the door, and then she says herself, she fled the home. Why would she say she fled the home wait, wait, wait. if she came back a little while later? Sure. She wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me. I got to change my audio real quick. Hold on one sec. Something's weird. Okay. Hold on. Real quick. If I've got mods in DGG or YouTube, can you literally permanently ban any fucking dipshit f retard that thinks that I, um, that thinks that I'm flipping sides on this issue? I'm not flipping it all if you think so. You're literally too fucking stupid to even watch my videos. Please, off forever and in, into all eternity. Holy shit, how fucking stupid are you? <clears throat> Sorry, hi, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I, so, there can be a dynamic where you've got somebody fleeing a situation in an escalatory way, right? So somebody wants to resolve a problem, you're like, ah, I don't want to deal with this right now, I'm leaving, okay, bye. And they have like a very avoidant personality. That is possible, however, it's also possible that she's pulling back because she knows that they're not gonna make any progress in this particular argument and she needs space. It's okay for her to say that, right? If she literally thinks that, if she literally is stressed to the limit here, and there's a lot of reasons for her to be, and she feels like she needs space from him, I think it's totally fair for her to wanna to take space. I don't think that's necessarily abusive. We need more information to say that. You, okay, you just, uh, I'm sorry, I'm being so aggressive, but you fail to see that she was leaving. It's not about taking space. She fled the home. What do you think taking space means? Him. That's not 
taking space? Also, is it not abusive? If, if it was the other way around and she was going in for chest surgery, wouldn't it be abusive to just leave your partner right before they have a massive surgery? She had I a mean, massive surgery at the same time. She delivered twins. Her surgery is probably more massive than his. Well, that's not a surgery. Bro, there's a lot of shit that goes on with your body when you're popping out two motherfuckers. Her it wasn't at the same time. Her surgery was a couple, like about a month or two after. I'm sorry, her birth, her giving birth was about a month or two after. The reason he couldn't be there was because of complications from his previous chest surgery. Okay. Also, she did. She had a C-section, but that's not even relevant. Um, okay. But, okay. Okay. Sure. But I'm just saying. Uh, so it, it was technically a surgery, but that's, it doesn't matter. Um, Sure. R she's not obligated to stay with him through surgery if she feels like she's like being ultra stressed and super uh, like abused. Like even if he did have a surgery in a few days, she's not obligated to to stay there and endure this. She she doesn't have that obligation. He's not obligated. It, even let's just say, even if he was frustrated, okay, at her not feeding the dogs the medicine, or her not taking the dogs for a walk or whatever, she's not obligated to. He's probably stressed about this surgery and he works a high paying job. He, she's not responsible to say like, okay, honey, I'll be there for you. You're going in for a major surgery. Even if, even if he was frustrated, which I don't, I don't think he was being unreasonable, but even if he was, you don't owe your, your husband for nine years that much. You're going to walk out on him before he has surgery. We don't know why she's walking out. What if he's been an abusive piece of shit for two years leading up to this? That's the issue, right? But, but, if he wants to, if he's feeling boxed in, she needs, can't he just buy another car? <laughs> okay, but you're saying he's abusive based on this clip. Where is well, the abuse? I've already told you. I'm not saying that he is abusive. I'm saying that in this clip, he is clearly exhibiting signs of abuse. Now, there's background information that could make me feel a little bit differently about it, but there is no conversation you can ever have with a partner where you're saying things like, you need to rise up and do your wifely duties. You're not worthy of being considered a wife. Why are you smoking cigarettes? Oh my God, it's so bad for you. What is wrong with you? I'm Holy stressed. shit! Leave me alone. Um, this is my first saying time. things like you have no discipline and respect, you give up so easily. The only way out of this is with discipline and respect. You sound like a a, a, a guy bossing around a boot camp uh, rather well, than like saying, a husband. That's not. That's not, these aren't the things only, that you say to somebody that you love. Him saying the only way out of this is discipline and respect is actually him saying I would like to work it out. It doesn't no, make it's sense not. Hold on, you gotta stop doing this. Saying, I would like to work this out is saying, I would like to work this out. Saying, the only way out of this is discipline and respect is making it so that the entire problem is hers and she's the only person that can fix anything. Can you give me one example in this video, for instance, where Steven Crowder takes responsibility or says that he wants to do something to work towards fixing the relationship? He's 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 saying to her like I want, I'm holding you to a higher standard. That's what is he doing? So say, what is he doing to fix a relationship? Like what suggestions well, he, he does he make? Look, that's the, it's the mother of his kids. She's walking out on him. He's saying, let's not do this. You give up too easily. Let's work it out. And why shouldn't no, women wait, wait, have wait, discipline? Wait. Hold why on, wait, wait, wait. Why shouldn't women have discipline and respect? Why wait, not? Wait, wait, that's, wait. Did he, if he said that, I, I might be a little bit warmer towards this, but he didn't say like, oh, let's work it out. He's saying that you need to have more discipline and respect. You give up so easily. Um, I don't love you. Uh, uh, when I ask you to do things, you say, no. When I ask you to walk the dog, you say, no. Uh, this is like what he's saying. You're not committed to anything. Are you even committed enough to do those things? Those are the things he's saying. He's made every no. single fault of the relationship on her in this fight, which seems to be saddling her with quite a bit of responsibility. He does not take any on his on uh, for himself. Okay, hey, okay, but but saying that you don't show like saying if she keeps saying I love you, Stephen, I love you, and he's saying, well, you don't show that love. Isn't that a respectful dig? Like that's you. It's perfectly fine to say that to somebody and say, I, if you really love me, I'd like you to show your commitment. What that's, is wrong that with would, saying that's that? That's a fair statement. I just didn't hear him say that. He said, well, I don't love you. You've never shown me any love. Do you not understand how that's a way different statement than I feel like I'm not getting any love from you because I feel like you're not committing to this household like I am. Do you oh, understand oh, how I'm those? Sorry, two I'm I'm saying it like a girl would say it. I, I'm saying it, I'm not saying like an uh, frustrated man. I, just because he's frustrated and he's male and he's expressing anger doesn't mean he's abusive. He's not actually saying anything wrong. You're taking issue with the tone of it. Do you, okay. I am taking issue with the tone of it because the tone is what separates a productive conversation from a non-productive conversation, right? Tone is fine for somebody whose wife is walking out on him with her unborn children. That's fine. And we can say the tone is fine, but the tone is abusive. There's a difference between me saying wife, I think you can contribute more around the house. I think that like we can probably figure out a better like chore schedule versus saying, wife, you're a useless fucking cunt. 
Now, the, the primary meat of those messages might be the same, but one is probably abusive, and the other is like, let's work towards something and find a common solution to it. Yeah, but you always have to exaggerate. He did not call her the C word. He didn't scream no, at her. No, hold on, hold on. I'm he sorry, I'm sorry. I've seen abuse. It's not even close. It's not even close. He kept his temper. He was a little frustrated. And then he said, He kept Hillary, his temper. He literally up. gets up to chase her at the end of the video when she's trying to walk away. It's leaving him. She said she, she has a fleeing. right to leave. She can leave. She could do that. She's a human she being. She's a... three human beings. All three of she them has... have the right to leave if they want to. Like... She has a right to, no, but it's not just leaving. She has a right to walk out on her husband who's going in for chest surgery when she is eight months pregnant with his kids. She has a right to just do that. For Bro, what? they're her for kids what? too. Wait, hold on, what is this like? They're his kids. She's, he doesn't have to deliver them. It's not his fucking pregnancy, right? She, yeah, she but they're his kids. Okay, let's establish this. Does she have a right to take space and leave if she wants to? If, if there's a reason to, then yes. Okay, is it plausible that there's a reason to? I don't see any evidence for it. Okay. And in fact, Could I think we... it's wrong to do that to your partner. I think do it's wrong to do that. Do you think that based on this video, does it seem like they've probably had multiple fights in the past? Or do you think this is the first one? Yeah, I think it's likely. Okay, so they're referencing prior fights. Okay, why don't you at least like vape? Why do you have a fucking cigarette? Because it's cooler. It's absolutely not okay jesus oh okay. come on a vape is the lamest thing ever i, mean, I'll ever I can't believe that. you kids are looping back to smoking cigarettes i feel like i'm in fucking clown world right now okay <laughs> at least smoke weed jesus okay um weed is for losers too <sighs> okay <laughs> D okay D is it plausible i'm not even saying to commit you 100 is it plausible okay. that based on the disagreements they've had here is it plausible that uh Steven Crowder has been abusive towards Hillary in the past, and that's part of the source of their disagreement. Is that plausible? It's, and I'll say, on the other hand, so you don't get triggered, it's also plausible Hillary is just continually abusive to Steven as well, right? Both of those things are plausible, right? Here's what I would say. I would say from, the, from what I've seen and from the way she's acted, I actually think that I'd, I wouldn't place the blame on either side. I think she's, I think what happened is there was a, there's a, a extreme stress. He's going in for surgery. She's giving birth to her first kids, right? She had a miscarriage before, right? Okay. So it's extremely tense. I think that she got overwhelmed by the situation and freaked out because of past psychological, like her psychological issues. I do not intend to just place the blame on her. Okay. But I don't see him abusing <clears throat> her. Okay. What um, how, what what's your what's your family background? How wealthy are your parents? How wealthy are you? Um, I would say middle class. I was quite poor for a while, and now we're middle class. Um, okay. Catholic. Okay. I wanna, if I wanted to bet you $250 on more information coming out that would show that Steven Crowder was clearly abusive in the past part of his relationship, if I were to make that bet with you and give you odds, would you take that bet? So let's say I'll do three to one odds. If I'm right, you pay me $250. If you are right, I'll give you $750. That more information is probably gonna be released that shows that Steven Crowder was abusive towards Hillary. Would you take that bet if you had it in front of you? Or are you so- I'll, I'll, I'll bet you $5,000. You would really bet that, that no more information would come out that would show Steven Crowder would be abusive towards Hillary Crowder. Well, we'd have to define what abusive meant, but yes, I'd bet you $5,000. But those odds, yeah, absolutely. And you think that, but you I don't think- it. I have it. You don't think that any I'll of, take the 250 bet too. You don't think that any of the behavior in the video so far though rises to the level of abuse. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think he's a frustrated man who's stressed because he's going in for surgery and he sees his wife leaving him and he's trying to continue the conversation and she, she's not only that but she starts calling him. She says your abuse is sick, Stephen. That's a line when you cross that line with your husband. You're you're breaking the relationship, and he's saying, "Seriously, you're gonna do this to me? You're gonna?" And he's getting frustrated. I've seen this happen in real time, and I know you could say I have a bias, but like I've seen this happen. The man is like, "What? Are you seriously gonna go the legal route? Like we're we've been married for nine years. We saved Hold ourselves." Hold on, none of that was other. in the video. I don't know why you're talking about this now. Well, I mean, well, but that is the history of their relationship. They've been married for nine sure, years. Sure, but you're we're drawing an extra stuff from the video. Because if we're gonna draw an extras from the video, she also said he's been emotionally abusive for years as well, right? Yeah, sure. I, I don't think that's true. Oh. I think what she defines as emotional abuse, I think she's oppositional, I think she has psychological problems, I think she was not ready to be married in, a, in the way that she uh, committed How to be married. How can you possibly ascertain all of that so quickly? From her behavior, from her behavior. From but her you, behavior, but I'm sympathetic. Okay. 
when you say all the information you're giving a frustrated man who's stressed and is trying to continue the conversation, all of those things are explaining why somebody might be abusive, right? That's not just, that's not a free pass. You can be frustrated and try to continue the conversation. That doesn't give you a free pass to do whatever you want though. That could just be a reason why you end up being abusive. Well, if he was being abusive, I would say something like, and I wouldn't say he's a frustrated man trying to get his wife to stay with him. I would say like, he's taking something out on her that he's obviously lashing out or he's being manipulative or he's trying to make her feel bad for something that, you know, you know, I mean, it's only a three minute clip, but when you consider the context, I think it's pretty obvious that I, I feel bad for the guy. He's in this situation. I don't think when he says I chose wrong, I don't think he, ch I don't think he chose wrong. I, I just think his wife has psychological problems that manifested themselves in this extreme moment of tension and she's wrong to attack him the way she is but i think it can be resolved i don't okay, think they're married think, what you don't think that she might be frustrated you don't have any sympathy for her either she's about to be a single mom with two with twins i do have sympathy for her i i don't think i don't think she was ever married to him i don't think she understands what marriage is how can you how can you how can you possibly know that from the actions she's taken, if somebody you're truly- just, well, Hold on. Cause you're summarizing like nine years of a relationship saying she had, they were at nine years a long time to be together with somebody for you to say, well, I don't think she knew what she was getting into. It's not really that long to be married, but yeah, it is well, a long time to be with somebody. Nine years, nine how years old is are- Nine years a long time to be Yes, how old are these people? I don't actually know. Steven Crowder is 35 years old. He's been with his yeah, chick since he was 26. That's a long relationship. Nine years? Yeah. Well, they, that's another example, right? Okay, so they were both, I think, virgins, or at least they were celibate before they got married. Uh -huh. They were they were young. And this is another example of why traditional, like, right-wing, like, no hymen, no diamond things, they don't always work out. Because if you don't have the experience then you're just gonna enter a relationship like it's not always ideal. You might uh -huh. be signing up for something you're not sure you're supposed to sign up for. A marriage is supposed to be commitment until death to this other person, to better them, to help them, and to support them. She walks out on him at his at his weakest moment. Do you that, think that means, does that commit her to- somebody who doesn't understand does what's that, going so on. So is she committed to enduring an infinite amount of abuse from her partner then? Well. Is a man raising his voice emotionally because he's angry abuse? A man saying things like, I don't love you. You're not earning your place as a wife. You're not committed to anything. Uh, getting up to prevent you from leaving like a discussion. I would say those things are abusive, yeah. He didn't He didn't get up to prevent her from leaving. He, he, he got up to continue the conversation because she was walking out. Okay, but hold wait, on, wait, 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 wait. That is to prevent somebody from leaving, okay? He, he if let her leave. He let her leave, he didn't raise a sure, hand. He, he might, let her leave. but if we're having a conversation and somebody clearly wants to leave, and I I stand up and I go and walk in front of them. Like, what is the implication? Of course, right? We don't know how long he, after she leaves. Let her, he let her leave. He didn't raise a hand. There's no history of physical abuse. I didn't say wait, there was wait, wait. physical abuse. I'm just saying he's I being, at the very least, he's being physically intimidating to prevent her from leaving. Of course. What, chasing Actually, somebody she into was a, She was sorry. physically intimidating? Is that what you're going to say? Was she about to yeah, swing she, that big baby belly right into his face and fuck him up? Is that... She was physically aggressive during that conversation she, she was standing she moved closer towards him he was sitting down relaxed and then she she walked right hold past on. him towards the door no, she walked hold right on. past this him. is first She's of all of wait him. firstly he was not relaxed that is not true okay just because he was sitting down does not mean he was relaxed he was leaning forward he was very aggressive the entire conversation number one number two okay Crowder's a pretty big boy. Looks like a six foot dude. She's, okay, literally a fucking submarine right now for two other mini human beings, okay? I don't think that she was ever physically intimidated. Standing and walking around like kind of confused and anxious and avoidant, we're, yeah. Okay, maybe not intimidating, but aggressive. There are ways to be a physically aggressive without like- you're not, There you're are, not, you're I agree. There I'm are lots of ways. Intimidate. There are lots of ways to be physically aggressive, I agree, but her body language and the way that she seems to approach conflict is to be avoidant. She was not being physically aggressive, but seemed like she was being avoidant. Well, but I wanna get you on one thing. Okay, so you yeah, agree the things thing. he- Okay. Okay, so the things he said, right? You agree that they could be said in a way that is positive, but your issue is with his tone. Is that right? Kind of, yeah. But tone can determine whether literally a message is incredibly positive or incredibly abusive. If my son comes home from school and I'm not like, true. it is absolutely true. If my son comes home from school and I'm like, Nathan, you didn't do well on the math test. Like, we're gonna, like, you can do better on the next one. Versus him coming home and saying, Nathan, you're mathematically fucking retarded. Figure your shit out. One of those things is abusive. One of those things is totally fine, even though they're essentially saying the same thing. Well, How do we even know? Is that abusive? How is that abusive? 
If I call you an ugly bitch, is that abusive? I mean, if you think it's true, it depends on the truth. It doesn't depend on the tone. You can say the same Wait, thing. Wait, so things that are true can never be sad. abusive? Well, that's not. If you're saying something just to be mean, like if you call a fat girl like you're a fatty, I mean, it might be true that she's fat, but it's, yeah, it's abusive. But you're saying the tone. What tone was he taking? He didn't even. He was scream. taking, a, he, yeah, he was he taking a derisive scream. tone. You don't have to scream. I don't know why you think you have okay, to scream okay. to be abusive. So. Oh, he was frustrated. He took a frustrated, angry tone. I think he was right? frustrated, yeah. That's probably why he was abusive, because he was frustrated and stressed out, yeah. Well, by your own criteria, you've been abusive to me during this conversation. Do you I think am, you've been abusive? I am abusive. The difference is that the type of relationship that we have is quite a bit different, number one. And number two, I haven't, we're not, I'm not personally attacking you. Like, I don't think that... I've been abusive towards you. I'm just disagreeing, right? If Steven Crowder and him were having like, a, if Steven Crowder and Hillary were having a conversation, a passionate conversation about a difference in politics or their view of like the news or media or whatever, that'd be one thing, but they're not. It's a very personal conversation, right? Like let's say, so I brought up the smoking thing and I was like, oh, smoking is disgusting. Don't do that. If I were to be like, yeah. you're a worthless fucking bitch. Why are you smoking, you disgusting fucking animal? What the fuck is wrong with you? You dis Your teeth are gonna rot, you disgusting, right? That would be like abusive. Right, there's a difference. I like that, keep going. Yeah, like yeah, it. I'm sure you do, okay? It sounds like you got a history of it, okay? Listen, all right? Um, tone can make an otherwise normal statement rise to the level of abuse. Do you not agree with that? Or what What? It, what in your mind? Because earlier it seems like you said using a person in a way that isn't respectful to the other person, treating them poorly, misusing the person. I feel like all of those things can be accomplished through tone. That's, okay. First of all, so you said it was tone, but you also say it's the content. Okay, first of all, he didn't say anything, he didn't call her names at all. He Saying said, I don't you love you. Be, that's not calling somebody names. That's, you can say that, you can say, you can say I don't love you. He, he, he immediately <laughs> followed it up, he immediately followed it up with saying, you've never shown me love, right? Sure. Okay. Okay, so obviously he's saying like, you use, I think what he's saying is, you use love as this way of just shutting me down. Like, hey, I love you, I love you. And he's saying, well, then I don't love you. Let's, let's to go all the way. Because fuck you for con constantly using that against me to say like, I love you, I promise I love you. Then he says, you never show me love, okay? But secondly, he, the, so the content of what he was saying was not abusive. He didn't call her names. He asked her to be a better person. Is that abuse? He, okay, this perhaps is the impasse. We're at an impasse, okay? He asked her to be a better person? Yeah, but he said, be worthy. He's not saying you fucking Be worthy of being a He's wife. Saying, be worthy of being be called worthy. a wife. You think that's asking somebody to be a better person? But but if somebody, if, you're if not your committed employer to anything. says- Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but if your employer says like, you signed up for this job and you're not, com you're not following through, I need you to show me that you want to like, it's not making sense. Is that abusive? No, what you, you just like said there sounds a lot better than you're not worthy of being an employee. You're not worthy. Why don't you do something worthy of being called an employee? That's different than like, you can put in more work and you can do different things or whatever, right? What if your dad said to you something like, like the difference between like, hey, I think you can do better versus like, why don't you be worthy of being my daughter? Like, do you not see the difference between those two statements? It's like, all right, this is where the bias is gonna come in because he has said that to me. He, well, he hasn't said that, but he, he said like, you know, you should do a lot better and he says it forcefully. And I appreciate it because it makes me a better person. And any good woman appreciates that. Okay, you should. Any good person, <laughs> any good person appreciates somebody respecting them enough to ask them to do better instead of just kowtowing because what, they're pregnant or they're a woman. Give me a break. Women are people. It's just sexism if you say, oh, you shouldn't be mean to a pregnant woman. Perfectly rational. <laughs> Uh, listen, I agree to some extent. Fuck pregnant women. You should be mean to them, okay? But uh, that doesn't make it not abuse, okay? Um, Is it abusive for my dad to ask me to be a better person? Uh, it depends on how he says it. Okay, what if he says, you did a shitty job on that. Do better next time. Is that abuse? That's okay. But if he says, like, you're not Steven worthy... Carter! Steven Crowder didn't say anything worse than that? He said you're not worthy... Be worthy of being a wife, implying she's not even worth being his wife. That's a much, that's a markedly different statement. I don't love you. Be worthy of being called a wife. That's, that's a call to improvement. That's not beating somebody down. He's <laughs> saying, I want you to be a good wife to me. I, if, if somebody is, okay. well, I, think I don't we're understand. Gonna... <laughs> Clearly. Um. 
I just... If somebody really cares about you, they will tell you when you're fucking up so that you can do better and you can be a better person. If they don't care about you, they'll just let it go and they don't even respect you enough okay, to tell you listen, when you're messing up. Okay, you. I saw you in my chat, okay? <laughs> um, this is... I, I totally see what you're saying, okay? I connect with you, okay? Because okay. I, I was you, okay? I understand. Did you watch the three, three hour talk I just had with the Dr. K guy? I, I watched some of it. Okay. I was nervously getting ready to. Okay. Did you see the part in the beginning where I said, hey, um, there are things that I've learned as I've gotten older from 20 to 34 that I wish I could have learned when I was younger. And one of those things is there are certain social conventions or ways of communicating with people that are actually really important, sometimes more important even than what you're saying. If you look at the habits of any effective leader, if you look at the habits of any successful relationship person, um, there is a method to delivering criticism that is paramount. Sometimes it's more important than the criticism you deliver itself. The idea that if you want somebody to improve, that gives you carte blanche to say anything you want is a very sexy, romantic, and exciting way to do a Hollywood movie, but it is a horrible way to approach a relationship. Have you ever seen the movie Whiplash? Mm-mm. Okay. No. Have you ever seen Black Swan or? Yes. Fuck, okay. Yeah. That's, fuck. I watched this movie one time when I was drunk and I don't remember it well enough. I shouldn't even brought that up. There are, there are ways that you can push people in incredibly, mm-hmm difficult ways but that while that might work for some people it's that's not going to work for everybody and for most people it's going to end up being like just abusive like again if i tell somebody like hey listen i think you can do better that's way different than saying like be worthy of being my wife do you what if what 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 if uh, what if what if what if somebody walked behind you and like knocked over your guitar would you say what the fuck come on i'm doing a stream can you be careful is yeah. that abusive if you raise your voice? No, not necessarily. Is but if somebody walked if by, say, if somebody walked by and knocked on my guitar, and I was like, "Mel, you're not worth my being my fucking wife. You're not even worthy of being my wife right now. You need discipline." You don't think he that's like? Say, but you're exaggerating his tone. Hold on. You okay. Are exaggerating yeah, okay. His tone. I, I'm exaggerating his tone a little bit. I'm sorry. We can go back and watch it. But like his tone is very clearly pointed. None of this is a mutual approach to solving a problem. None of it is him taking responsibility. All of it is saddling every single problem here on his wife, saying that she needs to change and then treating her like a daughter, treating her like a child. You need to take responsibility. The only way we're going to get through this is for you having some discipline and respect. You have no discipline and respect. You give up so easily, right? These are all things that he said. These are quotes that I've written down. Only way to this is discipline and respect. You have no discipline and respect. You, I'm sorry. I'm exaggerating the tone, okay? You give up so easily. You have no discipline or respect. Oh, by the way, keeping a low tone. Oh, see when you change the tone? You change the tone and suddenly... That's fine to say to somebody they have no, no discipline No, not respect. to a... What if he's right? What if he is right, though? What even if, if he was, have those things? Even if he's right, there's a better approach to this conversation. And layered on with other things, like uh, like asking rhetorical... Like, how do you respect men? Right, a rhetorical question like that. These aren't. This isn't a person trying to solve a problem. This is a person trying to demean and attack a partner. That's what it is. If you would ask anybody that's effective, asking a question. Are you a fucking retard? How is that demeaning? No, no, no. Hold on. He's do you saying, see? Wait, wait. Do you see what I just said there? Are you fucking retarded? Do you see? I'm just asking a question. You understand? I was very demeaning, right? To ask you that question, right? Yeah. Okay. So. How do you respect men? You understand that's like a very demeaning question. It's your wife of nine years. Why are you asking her? It's not her? a demeaning question. Okay. How is that demeaning? He's, he's trying to establish, like, he's trying to establish, Hillary, we agreed. They're both traditional Christian people, right? So he's saying you can't accuse her of, like, being a liberal and he's trying to conform her to his right-wing values, right? I didn't say saying, any of that. Okay, okay. Even in right-wing relationships, context. even in the most conservative fuck relationships, no wife wants her husband saying things like, you have no discipline and respect. You give up so easily. The only way through this is with discipline. You need to be worthy of being a wife. You need to do your wifely duties. My guess is that in 95% of conservative households, if a husband said some shit like, you need to do your wifely duties, the wife would fucking kick his ass or leave. That's some wild shit to say to your wife. Because most conservatives are fake. Yeah. That's no. Right. They're fake. <laughs> even in a real conservative. Why? You can't say that to your wife you need to do your wifely duties that's like some bdsm like that's like some sex role play that's some insane shit to say you need to do your wifely duties that's wild to say to a mom in the house if she agreed to be a wife and have certain duties as a wife why can't he say you should do those what if he was just drinking and not providing for his family or something and just lazing around couldn't she say well you agreed to be the father of my kids and my husband you're not doing what you agreed to do even if she got frustrated would that be abusive for her to say, or wouldn't she be calling him out on something? It's a, like, I mean, she 
She clearly, she's not afraid of him. She's clearly like disrespecting him by saying like, Steven, I'm not talking to you. I'm. She's averse. You said it yourself. What if she's been averse for nine years? Maybe, what if but I can't. Over- I haven't seen that. And generally, and even though. Even though avoidant people can be abusive, I'm generally gonna side with the avoidant person when I'm only given a small clip. Chances are, if she's trying to avoid the problem, it's because she feels very stressed, and she's got a lot of reasons to be, obviously, we can see them protruding from her stomach, right? She's probably pretty stressed, and I think her trying to take space there is perfectly a-okay. Him pursuing them, that person, and that, in the really derisive way that he's doing so, I would need a lot of background information to say, like, uh, I, I totally am 100% on his side for this. Now, there could be, there could be a decent chunk of background information. Like I said, maybe she does only have two responsibilities in the household and she's fucking off and she's not doing anything and I can understand his frustration. Even if I understood his frustration, the 100%, what he's saying is still kind of abusive and it's hard to imagine. Like, like the statistically speaking, I would take her side more than his without having any background information here. But you've only defined what he said as abusive by his tone. Tone can be abusive. Okay, the content, first of all, their health conditions are equivalent. She's giving birth, he's having major surgery. No, okay, he's so not, I don't even know if he's having major he's surgery. I don't even he know was, how much is, okay. He had major, he had chest surgery in June. Like after, Okay, after but it's not like, it's not, we're not talking like open heart surgery here, okay? Like, well, they put they put bars in his chest. I mean, that's pretty. And he had like his lung filled with fluid at, due to complications. It's sure, pretty there were complications. Surgery. That's pretty serious. I think giving birth to twins is also a pretty serious thing. Do yeah, you? I, but I mean, you said she's stressed because of that. I'm saying he's equally stressed because of a major surgery. She's stressed. And she's because giving birth in she, two months. He was getting his surgery quickly after that. After that. Wasn't she eight months Are, pregnant here? How many? How long are these babies hanging out for? If she was eight months pregnant here, isn't she giving birth in like a few weeks? A week well, or two? I mean, it, it was it was in several weeks after his surgery, which is why he planned it before so he could be there to, to, for the birth of his kids. But then there was the lung complication, so he couldn't be there. Okay. And they say he chose not to be there. True. That, that's look, another part look, of. Oh yeah. Okay. Look, go ahead. But you do agree. You do basically agree with me that you, you do basically agree with me that it's it's you agree with me that it's not abusive. You're only saying the tone. You're only saying the tone can be abusive. I wish I lived in a world where tone didn't make you abusive because then I would never be an abusive person. But like tone can absolutely be the difference between delivering a message in a respectful, caring and compassionate way versus just like taking your anger out on somebody. One hundred percent. Okay, but he's not taking. You said you said if me and you if me and you were arguing about something political, we could both get excited and angry. You can't express emotions with your wife of nine years who's leaving you, but you can get excited and angry and aggressive in a debate. You trust that person more than anything else. Why is it abusive to express your emotions? I hear this all the time. People say that men expressing anger is abusive. It's not. <laughs> These, comparing somebody expressing excitement or anger or whatever in a debate is different than being a condescending, derisive asshole to your wife. Those are two, they're two different things. Like it's a different context. It's a different um it, the, the, the problem that we're attacking is different. If we were having a debate over your personal lifestyle and I was shouting at you like this or whatever, then you could arguably say I am being abusive towards you. Oh, you yelled at me about the cigarettes. Yeah, but I didn't call you a worthless, disgusting piece of shit who wasn't living up to the duties of being like the daughter of your father or whatever. I wasn't going <laughs> in. I just think the smoking is disgusting, which it is, by the way, <laughs> well, and you should stop. I'm going to have another one just because you said that. Okay, well, listen, it's your body, okay? Look, it's not good, but I'm, you know, it's, it's a stress thing. So, how can you be addicted to cigarettes at 20 years old? Look, there's been a lot of stuff going on in my life. I, I okay. started smoking. Okay. Can I just 17. hear you? I just want to hear you understand this. It's not a stress thing. It's an addiction to nicotine thing, right? Like I can get stressed, and I don't. There are a lot of people that get stressed and don't feel the need to smoke. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm addicted to nicotine for sure, but I do think I could give it up if there was less stress in my life. I'm not really a smoker type, like. My lungs are not holding up super well. But you're, anyways. How long have you been smoking for? Three years. Okay. <laughs> if you're 20 years old and you've been smoking since you're 17, what mm-hmm. else is the smoker type? Do you need a voice box? What makes you the <laughs> smoker type? Well, no, you know, some people can handle it better than others. My lungs are very sensitive. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, well, it's just some people like some people can smoke like my my great grandpa smoked his entire life and he lived till 95 and he was fine. But, you know. OK. Uh, and maybe he would have lived till 115, you know, maybe lost 20 years of his life from smoking. Maybe. 
But so you you do basically agree with me that he's not abusive. You you no, you I don't agree with you. Can, you're saying you're and, saying that tone can't make you abusive. I don't agree with that. I think tone absolutely can make you abusive. Fine. Even if we agree that tone makes you abusive, getting okay. angry with your wife because she's failing you is not abusive. No, it wouldn't it's be perfectly abusive. Perfectly fine. But attacking okay. her constantly in the conversation and then using these kind of like snarky replies, and snarky rhetorical questions, and then acting like you're her father and saying that she lacks discipline or respect. Um, and then, yeah, I would say that these things are probably abusive, yeah. Would you say that a wife can fail her husband? Of course. Okay. So what if she's failing him? And what if he's saying, I want us to stay together? He didn't say that, though, did he? Did he say that? Well, he, he says you give up so easily. You throw in the <laughs> towel so easily. How, that's, uh, that's not him asking her to keep talking? What if what if he's saying that while well, he's been abusive the whole time and she is giving up because he's abusive? Well, but she's the one shutting down the conversation and he's the one who wants to talk. Yeah, but no? she has a right to withdraw from the conversation if she feels like it's too heated right now, which it seems like it is. So you're saying that a man getting angry is abusive. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Did I say that? You keep, he's, Try again. he does not say snarky things. He doesn't say really? snarky things. Really? When he says, no. when he says, no. When he says, I ask you to take the dog out and you say, no. You don't think that sounds like snarky? He literally sounds like a dog when he says it. When he, says, snarky, it's frustration. It's when he says, okay, when he says, next? I don't love you, that's the big problem. That's not like a little bit of snarky. It's, it's, I don't think it's snarky. I don't think he's trying to win the argument. I think he's frustrated. I don't think it's snarky. Snarky would be like, well, guess what? I don't love you. So there, or something like that. Like it's, he's saying, well, I don't love you because all you do is use love as a way to control me, as a way to say, shut up, Steven. When you say things like, are you committed enough to do those things? That's abusive to say to somebody? Are you committed enough? She's not doing them, right? She didn't feed the dog the medicine. There's some evidence that she isn't doing what he's asking her to do. When he condescendingly asks, feeling some constraints? How is it wrong to point out if somebody's leaving you? My fourth are getting served? How is that abusive? That's he constraining asked, him. When he asks the question, how do you respect men? Yeah, they're both traditional Christians. He's saying, "All right, do you want to go over it? You're not treating me the way we agreed that you we would treat the way that we you would treat me, like you treat men as a traditional Christian." When she's overstepping How? a little, and he's saying, "Watch it, watch it." That's totally understandable. If 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 my if if I was married and I said to my husband, "You're abusing me. You are abusing me." That would be crossing a line that is serious to cross. I'm not saying that he deserves to like hit me or something, but it's breaking the relationship. Isn't it? To say like your abuse is sick. That's What if she feels like he's being a trust? What if she feels like he's being abusive though? Sorry. You're okay. What if she feels like he's being abusive? Yeah. Wait, how do you get out of but, your but, room? That's a there's two doors. It's an old house. Oh, because you have like your closet like blocked off by that table in the background. I'm very confused by the arrangement of the door and the. That's actually a door to the other room. There's three doors in here. It's kind of crazy. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's an old colonial. Everybody went everywhere apparently. No privacy. Look, gotcha. Destiny. Yeah. You basically agree with me. I can see you basically agree with me. Here's an idea. Okay, I will quit smoking forever if you agree to be my partner in this debate. I'm not gonna take the uh, the negative on if Stephen Crowder was abusive. There's no way. Just do it for my lungs. Come on. This is a this forever. request is abusive. I'll debate the other <laughs> side of you if you want, but I'm not gonna fucking I, no. Even rhetorically, even as a fucking flex for debating, I wouldn't do it because people actually think that I. I'm glad you came on because people think I believe what you believe, which is fucking wild. Okay. <laughs> Come on, for my lungs, it's bad. I'm a smoker. I'll give it up. I promise you forever. If what? you agree, you basically agree with me. Come You're on. You're like this We're is like be black. This is like hostage taking. This is like the, like, I'm going to do this, or please help me with this, or I'm going to kill myself. Nuance is okay. It's okay if we don't completely agree. The other side is going to be completely saying he's an abusive p piece of shit, right? He's abusive, he's controlling, he's dominant, and she's, she's brave for coming out. You basically agree with me. You're just saying his tone could have been better. Okay, fine. We can agree to disagree. Nuance is fine. Come on, you basically agree with me. I'll... I don't basically agree with you. You saying it over and over again, trying to gaslight me, okay, and a thing of that is not going to work, okay? 
I'll think about it, but right now I'm leading like 99% towards no, okay? Okay, <laughs> Even fine. for you to stop smoking, okay? Listen, all right? Here's my personal advice I'm gonna give you, okay? You need to change your whole outlook on this because you are on a one-way track towards the worst abusive relationship in your life, okay? Number one. Number two, because you're not gonna listen to that advice, okay? Number two, please, for the love of okay. God, okay? When you get older and you start talking to boys and having dates and sex and all that, use protection, okay? Because the first guy that you date, you're seeking out an abusive partner, I can tell. And if you get baby trapped, your life is fucked, okay? So wait a while, mature a little bit. I'll keep that in mind. Okay, I yeah. don't believe in birth control, so I'm not gonna do that, but thank you. <sighs> okay. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, your life is, I'm watching a young person just fucking destroying themselves right now, okay? Um, I, 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 my life would be great. I mean, I, I don't believe, I don't agree with Steven Crowder politically. I think he's, you know, he can be a bit of a douche, but I totally agree with him. I would be happy to be with a man who supports me, who's as rich as him, and who takes care of me like him. No problem. Even I'll if he was abusive? Uber. Well, I mean, I don't think Steven Crowder's abusive at all, so if he was abusive, I wouldn't want to be with an abusive person, but I'd be happy to marry to a man like Steven Crowder. Okay. Why? I'll get in the Uber and I'll feed the dog its medicine. Okay. Just a random question. <laughs> I don't know if I even want the answer to this. Why are you against birth control? Well, well I think sex should be pleasurable. And I don't believe in really having... It. It's also because I'm Catholic, but it's basically natural law. I don't believe in, like, put, like having sex with a plastic bag, which is basically what the guy's doing. I think it's emasculating for the guy. And if I was to go on birth control, then my sex drive would be lowered and it wouldn't be enjoyable. And I'd get all fat and tubby and everything, so... What about, like, an Doesn't IUD work. or something? Yeah, that stuff messes with your... I don't want to be a walking uh, chemical <laughs> test tube where I'm, like, half pregnant all the time. <laughs> Bro, how many pregnancy. fucking chemicals are in the fucking cigarette you're smoking? What are you talking about? Well, oh, not that many. And the cigarette doesn't make me half pregnant all the time, so I avoid pregnancy. It does I'm make you pregnant. Drive. You're getting knocked up with fucking small cell fucking sarcoma or whatever the fuck. You're getting cancer, okay? It's the worst type of pregnancy. It's not even fun to deliver. You just die from it. Holy shit. Oh, plenty of... Yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> fine, but... And it doesn't my argument against birth control make sense, though? No, it, it's one of the most retarded arguments I've heard in my entire fucking life. Well, no, I mean, you can use naturally, natural family planning, too. There's times when women don't get pregnant. They can't get pregnant. But, I mean, you, do you think men do you know what the real life, emasculating do you know what, to have sex with a plastic bag? It's probably more emasculating for the woman to roll over in the middle of the night, and she's like, we need to talk. And the guy's like, what's up? And she's like, I'm pregnant. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> and I already know you're probably against abortion, too, huh? Yeah, I'm against abortion, oh but my I don't God. think you should make it illegal. I think it's basically like... Yeah, but you're against it. You're point. a walking death trap to yourself, too. Holy shit. So you like me? <laughs> Not <laughs> in a plastic bag sense, maybe, okay? You you just... You have all the wrong opinions about everything. Holy shit. Really? How can you justify think, smoking cigarettes and not taking birth control? Well, I mean, the effects of nicotine are, it's a, it's a mild stimulant. Birth control is abuse of a woman's body. It, it messes with your hormones and everything. You're, it, it tricks your body into thinking you're half pregnant so that, you know, you can't get pregnant. That's an abuse, like, obviously, <sighs> right? No. You're not refuting what I'm saying. You're just laughing at me, it's, which is I, you're right. I was, uh, no, you're right. I'm gonna no, no, no. Hold on. Make... You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm not responding to what you're saying, okay? First of I all, there's nothing. By destiny. There's not Good. Can you go? Yeah, you're on a long list of women that claim to be, okay? So there's nothing wrong with altering your body's hormones. There's a lot of things you can do, natural and unnatural, that will change your body's hormones, okay? If we want to change our hormones to effect some sort of end, like not getting fucking pregnant, that's probably an okay thing to do. There's probably pros to changing your hormones, and there's probably cons to changing your hormones, right? An older man going on TRT because he's got some issue with producing testosterone, probably not the worst thing in the world. An older woman who might be facing like an early menopause or having some other issue going on some form of HRT is probably not the worst thing in the world either. If you want to go on birth control and it helps your acne and it regulates your cycle and you don't get pregnant, that's probably not a bad reason to go on birth control just saying well let's change your hormones so i think it's bad is probably the dumbest reason not being on birth control okay that was my there's my but full literally, literally the point of of birth control for women is to, to trick your body into thinking that you're pr pregnant when you're not okay. so that you don't get pregnant so well obviously so then you lose your sex drive because you lose you your don't sex always drive you lose get... why do you think you lose your sex drive that's not even true well, 
most girls lose their sex drive. They also get fat. Or that's, at least that's not necessarily true weight. either. There's oh, t- give me a break. There's a t- there's a there's totally a typical like birth control body. It's like sausagey, and the girl like doesn't <sighs> is it not really interested in sex. Bro, where do you live? Have you seen Catholic women not on birth control in the South? They're the fattest sausagey motherfuckers in the world. If you were to kick one of these motherfuckers down the stairs, they would roll like a wheel. What are you talking about right now? Women on birth control are sausagey and fat. Go to fucking any college campus. You can see a lot of hot young fuckable, non-sausagey looking women that are all on fucking birth control. Wait, whatever you're saying right now is just the least true fucking thing in the world. Some birth control might have an adverse impact on your sex drive. That's true. That's why there's lots of different birth controls. There's there's uh, uh, IUDs that have hormones. There's copper IUDs. There's different birth control pills that are high hormones and low hormones. There's tons of different things you can get. Some of these are even helpful for your cycle. You can't just hand wave it all away and go, oh, it's tricking your body and it makes you into a sausage. You know what else makes you into a sausage? You know what else makes you fucking huge? You know what else fucks your cycle up? Being fucking fucking pregnant well you know nobody's perfect i might not be able to be perfect but i would like to have sex with somebody who loves me and with the end of having a kid if if possible okay that but seems like the best type of sex to me yeah but sometimes believe it or not you have sex with people before you're ready to have kids with them or are you an abs- absent only kind of person i believe in abstinence but i'm nobody's perfect i don't know <sighs> Okay, well, that's a very costly mistake, so <laughs> just be careful if you fuck up, It would I guess. be a mistake. It, it, well, I'll, I mean, you know, nobody's perfect. I'm not saying, like, uh, you know, you, you can never use a condom ever. It might make sense, but I really feel like this has been an abusive conversation, so uh, I think I'm going like, <laughs> to... Okay, well, listen, if... Uh, I'm sure we'll probably argue about stuff in the future. Just uh, show me a message, okay? No, Steven, seriously. Yeah. I'd like to. I'd like to not be on birth control, and I'd also like to not be on cigarettes. You care about me, right? I'm not, I'm not going to be held emotionally hostage, okay? Even if you threaten to kill yourself, all please, right? Please, please. I'm going to tell you to make sure that please, nobody's please, underneath please. the window when you jump. No, I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to be emotionally please. gaslit like this. I'm too old for this, okay? Maybe you would have caught me when I was 24. I would agree to this, but I'm 34. I'm older. I'm wiser. We can come up with a debate topic that you agree with, like. Okay, if you can do that, if you can find something we agree with, then sure. Okay. But it's not going to be on something we don't agree with. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, have fun. Thanks Be for careful. having me on. Seriously. Yeah, no so problem. Fun. Where do you want to link your channel? Where can people find your insane shit out? Uh, Grace Thorpe, aka Joan, on YouTube. Grace Thorpe, aka Joan, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Okay, have fun. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Holy shit. Jesus Christ. Stream is super choppy all day today. Um, oh, the YouTube shit gets weird sometimes. I don't know why. Um, but I don't think on Rumble it's like, I don't know why it's. How are we, um, how are we having kids smoking? (laughs) Guys, what's happening here? Jesus Christ. (laughs) 